today we'll be talking about how the Pokemon community has let an orange lizard disappoint us time and time again. And I took that personally. Before we get into things, I just wanted Noodles to be able to say hello. She's kind of grumpy because she's currently shedding. That's why she's like white. She's growing so much already. Ah, oh, I love her. <laughs> kind of to the chase in this video, I wanted to discuss the elephant in the room, or should I say dumpster fires. Everything surrounding these Pokemon Center Elite trainer boxes, everything leading up to the release of them, the actual release of them, which was a giant soup sandwich, pretty much. I, I've been sitting back, like looking at all of this go down, and I was just like, what is happening? So I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Uh, I will split this video. So if you just want to watch the opening of these ETBs and all my comments on, you know, what's actually in the box, you could just skip straight to that. Or if you just want to hear Blue Rant, here we go. So if you're not already familiar with this product, it was sold exclusively from the Pokemon Center. It has a special label on it, special design, comes with the metal dice, and it was supposed to have 10 packs in it instead of eight packs, which is like a normal ETB. It was also $10 extra, or it was $49.99 instead of $39.99. Uh, it came in two colors, so you have Ice Rider, Shadow Rider, Calyrex. From my understanding, this is the first time Pokemon has sold an exclusive ETB only from their site. I'm not 100% sure why, they did this. I'm wondering if it's because they were trying to help people secure product at a reasonable price, um, which is really cool in my opinion. I like it. Or it could just be money grabs. You know, let's make two identical products except for just add a couple shapes and some metal dye in there and bada bing bada boo, we, you know, doubled our money <laughs> essentially. But anyway, the first thing I saw that is very minor, it's a very minuscule thing, but I was just like, Wait, what? I mean, I'm not too surprised because most of the time people kind of ignore people who play Pokemon anyway, but <laughs> the thing I saw so heavily from everyone about these ETBs was like, it comes with 10 packs, it comes with 10 packs, go buy it, it's two extra packs, which honestly is like, okay, cool, yeah, it has two extra packs, but you're also paying for the two extra packs. It's 10 extra dollars, so that's two extra packs. Like, I don't know, people were hyping up this 10 pack thing so much while just ignoring the fact of like what ETBs are made for, because it comes with all the stuff you need to actually start playing Pokemon. Some cheap sleeves, okay, yes, they are cheap sleeves, but they're perfect if you're just trying to sleep up a, a theme deck and practice playing Pokemon. The condition tokens, the dice, which are damage counters, the block of energy, which not a lot of people have uh, to supply their decks when they're first starting out, and the coin as well, which honestly is useless. You don't even use coins when you play TCG, but they're still cute. It was being so hyped out of proportion that this had 10 packs, and like in reality, it's like, okay, I guess that's what's unique about it. You just get more packs. More packs! Ah, <laughs> uh, and there's a fly in my coffee. Sweet, sweet, sweet. But anyway, that's just a small pet peeve of mine. It doesn't really matter that much. I just don't really like when people focus so heavily on just like, oh, but more packs, oh, but more packs, instead of like, oh yeah, what's this actually created for? Play Pokemon. Put card in sleeve. Play down on table. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not even all that relevant to the tumbleweed of terrible events that happened with this <laughs> whole thing. So, in May, a couple of promos were accidentally sent out to a couple of customers that bought stuff off the Pokemon Center uh, website. These were special delivery Charizard promos. A couple of people got them. And of course, like any fellow lover of Pokemon would do, you gotta throw them up online and sell them for a thousand dollars a piece. Right? Right? So that's definitely not gonna overhype this card at all and it's going to be a special delivery Pikachu 2.0 where people are selling this card and overinflating this card's price by ridiculous amounts of money. But everybody sees money and they say, oh, I want peace, I want peace of that. Orange lizard go burr. So of course, then we have the YouTube channels tumbling in with tons of theories and conspiracies about, oh, well, that definitely means that it's gonna be sent out with the next thing that's released by Pokemon, which is these Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Boxes. Let's just put this information out there, overhype absolutely everyone, uh, completely ignoring the fact that anytime a promo card has been released from the Pokemon Center, 
it actually shows it in your cart. It says, oh, you're buying this and you're gonna get this promo card as well. This just happened to me when I purchased those super cute little Pogo Gengar backpacks. And they're like, oh, hey, we're also throwing in this uh, supporter card as well. And I was like, oh, cool, sweet. That's how the site has always worked. But people are just like, nah, they're gonna secretly put them into our orders so that it doesn't generate as much hype around it. Why? 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 Why would the Pokemon Center not want to generate hype? Wouldn't they want to generate hype and say, yo, you're gonna order this and get the, the, the special delivery Charizard so everybody come order, everybody funnel in. Why wouldn't they want to do that? That makes the most sense for the company to advertise their, their sending promos with a package because everyone's like, oh cool, Pokemon Center's so cool. You know, I ordered the thing and I got a promo, a free promo, yay, you know? So I don't understand the theories behind it that, and people were pressing hard on this theory and you know what happened with that? Tons of people went to order these. Maybe they didn't even really care about the product itself. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but they definitely wanted the special delivery Charizard promo because of everything that happened with the special delivery Pikachu. So it was just like all of these people and all these rumors circulating about, oh, a Charizard is gonna come in this and a ton of people ordered this, expecting a Charizard with this, expecting it even though there's absolutely zero evidence or anything supporting that besides a couple people accidentally got it a month before and that's it. So now we have tons of people who ordered a bunch of these ETBs, not only expected the ETB, but also, you know, thinking or being hyped up that it's gonna come with a promo Charizard as well, uh, which is just, it was just a absolute tornado, an absolute storm coming. Storm is a brewing. And then everybody gets this email. Oopsies, uh, we accidentally packaged all these ETBs with only eight packs instead of 10 packs. Can you imagine being in that conversation? Like the, the people at the warehouse who are actually packaging all these like, yep, we're good to go. You know, all these ETBs are packaged, ready to go. And the person from Pokemon's like, awesome. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really cool. You know, exclusive box, 10 packs instead of eight, it's gonna be awesome. And then the other person's just like, wait, what? I'm not saying that people don't make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, and when there's humans involved in all of this process, of course there's gonna be mistakes, of course. But, there's also quality control. Uh, <laughs> and it's just so weird to me to, to just think that somehow it was just hugely, wildly misconstrued that, hey, we only want eight packs instead of 10, and then it was never checked into after that. There's not someone who knows what's supposed to be in this product who like got to see what it looks like, like the final product of it. I mean, I know, okay, yeah, you you know, you package it up, put it in a box and shrink wrap it, but there's gotta be some sort of quality control where they like pop one open and they're like, okay, good to go. You know, print the rest, package the rest, right? And I'm not mad, I don't even care about the 10 packs instead of eight packs. I just care about the metal dice anyway, so whatever. But I just, I sit there and I'm like, quality control though. Where's it at? Not to mention, I haven't seen these cards myself, but I've heard the, the quality of the cards themselves is like bad, like real bad. So we'll see for ourselves, I guess, when we pop these babies open, but it just seems like, and with so much that has happened as well from Pokemon, their quality control is just out the window. And you can blame this on uh, expedited um, printing, expedited packaging, expedited manufacturing, trying to play catch up with everything and the fact that they have to make so much more product now. That makes sense too, but it's like, yo, you're pulling bent cards out of packs? Bruh, it's not a good look. It's not good. You don't wanna see it. It's a tough balance, cause it's like, do they sacrifice quality control to get it printed faster? I think it's better to have more cards out there for people, of course, but it's like, Ugh, let's just double check sometimes, maybe. <laughs> it just hurts me a little bit inside. Like my heart just shrivels up a little bit. I'm just like, <laughs> The bad part about this was a lot of people didn't even know that there was an error with this box. And they're like, what the heck? It's supposed to come with 10 packs and it's only got eight. And then they're emailing Pokemon like upset about it. Uh, and I'm sure they responded and figured it out after that. But it's just causing more like disdain for Pokemon because it's like, yo, you advertise this. You have this up on your site for a week. You advertise this as like a specialty box that you're doing, a specialty release. And then you still jacked it up, you know? And I understand 
the outrage in that as well. Um, not fully, because honestly, it's like really not that deep, especially because they, they gave you money back. You pretty much got $10 off and a bunch of free cards that you're getting as well. So it's like, okay, you can't be too upset, but still, I, I understand, I get it. But what really made this worse was all the people who ordered this <laughs> expecting a special delivery Charizard with it. And not only did they not get the special delivery Charizard with it, uh, but they also didn't even get 10 packs. They just got eight, eight packs and Pokemon was like, oh, RB, my bad. So then people were just upset, like just mad at this product and just the whole release of this product and all the shenanigans surrounding this product. And I'm just sitting there like watching all of this go down from like the hype beast stuff to everybody being like, oh, the special literary charts are all the stuff, super hyped about this. And then it's just like, wee, boom. And then a giant explosion, everyone's just upset. And <laughs> it's just like so rough to sit back and watch and just be like, then you have so many people that are just like, I'm done with Pokemon. I'm sick of Pokemon. You know, they can't even get one single product, right? It just causes more disdain in the community. And then the people are like fighting like, oh, why are you mad at this? They gave you a refund. And then they're like, no, it's the principle. And then they're just like, blah, 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 blah. upset at each other, upset at Pokemon, just upset in general from a lot of people. And then the most infuriating part about this, one of the reasons, actually the main reason I wanted to talk about this then we have the uh, the error boxes coming up on good old eBay. Let's just straighten this out right now. People value error Pokemon cards. And by error, I mean misprints, miscuts, things that people are like, oh, that's really cool. And you know why it's cool? It's like a one in a million chance. It is very unique to have a miscut card or a misprinted card, unless it's mass misprinted, but usually miscuts and stuff. Like the Crobat that was like cut in half. Yo, that's super cool. I would love to have that in my collection. Those are really, really cool, unique events that happen. But that's where this whole thing gets misconstrued. Then people are thinking like, ooh, error equals good. And what was happening and is still happening is people then go online and they sell, they're selling these boxes as super rare, very rare error box from Pokemon Center. Like specialty Pokemon Center box, super rare, error, double the price. What? And I wouldn't even comment on this if people weren't actually buying them. <laughs> people are actually buying them. Oh God, it's so bad. It's not unique, it's bad. You're, you're buying something for more that is worth much less because it's a bad error. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's just bad. It's just so bad. And I just feel like this whole thing with these boxes has just encapsulated everything of just what the Pokemon uh, community and everything has been for the last year now, or last many, many months of people just overhyping stuff, sometimes falsely, actually most of the time falsely, whether it's prices, whether it's just like theories, like the special delivery Charizard with zero evidence behind that besides a couple people accidentally got a promo early, so people are just making stuff up because, oh, if I, if I post this video, it's gonna get tons of views because people, you know, want the exclusiveness, they want to know this information, they want to be uh, one of the only people to get this exclusive thing or whatever. You should not be buying something because you just want to be included in on this hype, you know? This is one reason why I am super stuck kind of right now because I don't want to like sensationalize things. I don't want to be like, I got to be the first to open this. I got to be on top of this because I need to be opening the most and the fastest and everyone else to get the most amount of views and traction and stuff. When you start thinking about that stuff, it just goes so downhill so quickly and it's not a good mindset to be in because then you're always just going to be pushing yourself more and more and more to get better and better and better. And by better, I mean, you're valuing the wrong things. You're putting your value into the wrong things. What can I do that's more expensive, that's more packs, that's more, more, more. And it gets out of control really quickly and it's just a bad, bad, bad mentality to have, especially when you're tying it in to something that is so near and dear to so many people, which is this hobby. I'm just gonna say that this whole thing was totally just kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. Uh, There's just so much surrounding it, and it just makes me very, very not hopeful about the release of future products. And I don't think 
future products are going to go well, uh, the releases of them, if we continue to follow this dumpster fire cycle uh, <laughs> of events. It's just a series, again, a series of unfortunate events that always leads to people being disappointed, people being upset at each other. It's not good. It's very bad. This rant went a little longer than expected, so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but I just like had all these thoughts swirling around in my head and instead of just letting it burn a hole inside of me, I was just like, ah, let me just go pop off on YouTube, I guess, you know? <laughs> but no one talks about this stuff on this platform for some reason, but nobody really brings this stuff up and it's just like, hey, let's all just like, you know, check ourselves before we wreck ourselves, I guess, with just this absolute like, just bananas, bananas of a situation. So yeah, sorry about super long rant. Let's get into opening these things because I, I have a, something else to say about quality control in these boxes. So let's just, let's just get into this. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, my little chimichangas, let's get into this. I'm gonna do Shadow Rider first. I have one of each, uh, but I'm gonna do Shadow Rider first just because I am personally playing Shadow Rider over Ice Rider, uh, mainly because I actually pull out of a bunch of locked packs of Chilling Rain. I pulled two VMAX Shadow Riders and two Vs online. It was super, super lucky. So I was like, well, I guess I'm playing Shadow Rider, which I was very excited to try out anyway. I kind of miss playing Psychic decks. So I'm pretty hyped about it. Let's, let's go into this baby first. So it's going to have eight packs in it instead of uh, 10 packs. And here is the booklet. So the one thing I have to say about this booklet that I've seen in a couple other videos, this right here, this right here, this is what I had to say about quality control again. This little paragraph right here says that you can use Houndoom's single strike roar ability to quickly find and attach single strike energy and impact energy cards. So another just absolutely ridiculous thing on Pokemon's part, impact energy is a single strike energy. Houndoom has an ability that allows you to search out single strike energy. So you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that tracks. You can search out impact energy. It makes sense, right? Because it's a single strike energy. No, 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 no. There is a an energy card, a special energy that is actually called called single strike energy and that is the only thing that can be searched out with Houndoom used with Urna Vitality. It is not, you are not able to use impact energy. Pokemon put out a ruling that you cannot search impact energy with any of the cards that say single strike energy because they're talking about the card single strike energy, not a single strike energy. Super confusing. Does not make any sense. It's literally printed incorrectly in here. So anyone who's new to the game and is reading through this booklet uh, would get the wrong information. So it's just like another thing that we're sitting here like, what? What? What is happening here? Okay. Here's our beautiful box. I should have put this right next to like a regular Shadow Rider um, ETB so you can actually see all the differences. There is a dent in this one, unfortunately, but still cute, still a cute box. We have the sleeves, which is the same design on the box. So that's kind of cool, kind of groovy looking. And then of course, it's gonna be the same design on the card dividers as well. Condition tokens for when your Pokemon are burned or poisoned is what those are for. And then we have our damage counters as well. Uh, our metal damage counters. What? Wait, why did I think the coin was supposed to be metal? No. What? That is a crime. They should package metal dice with a metal coin. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. They've made metal coins before and they're super cool. Man, I'm super bummed about that. And then the metal dice as well. For some reason, I thought these would be like a purple, um, almost like a chameleon color, but they're just silver with purple um, numbers. So it's kind of, I guess it's I. I think I'm just going into this like too sad. <laughs> this whole opening. I'm just like, was it worth it, Pokemon Company? Was it worth it? Okay, here we go. So we have eight packs. Um, let's see how this goes, I guess. Again, like I said before, I usually do not get very good pulls from ETBs um, as far as like the pull rates go. Eight packs. Ooh, start with the fist bump energy at least. Doctor, I actually haven't opened too much Chilling Rain with you all yet. I think we've done one or two videos, maybe even just one. I don't know, a bunch of people have been commenting, uh, boo dropping cards per usual, and they're just like, boo, when are you gonna open more? 
Open more chilling rain. So here we are, starting with the reverse hollow ladybug, one of my favorite cards in the set. Oh my gosh, that face is so cute. And oh my fire chicken. Glasses are fogging up right now. It is so hot in this room. Um, because it's Blaziken it Remax. Eh? <laughs> No, it's actually burning. It's like 90 degrees in here. But anyway, uh, Blaziken VMAX, Rainbow Rare. Um, wow. Now I'm gonna look like a huge tool bag. Uh, <laughs> like, I never get good pulls at ETVs. I just pulled a Rainbow Rare. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God, this card is so pretty, too. This is a beautiful... Why does this look like it is, uh... Not a traditional rainbow. It's like more of a muted pastel color, which is very, very nice, actually. I really like it. But anyway, not only is this a secret rare Blaziken VMAX Chicken Boy, but it is a very, very good card. This card fits super, super well into current uh, format, like the way things are rolling with spread damage decks and setting up uh, your other Pokemon with this Blaziken is very, very, very good. It's a very good card for that. So it has clutch for 60 during your opponent's next turn. Defending Pokemon can't retreat. And you're just kind of like trapping their Pokemon there for one fireball. And then max blaze for two colorless. Choose up to two of your benched Pokemon, uh, sorry, benched rapid strike Pokemon and attach an energy card from your discard pile to each of them. That's just an energy card. So it can be basic or a special energy card. Uh, it can do both, which is very, very good, very versatile. It would be a little bit different if it was only basic. It is super good that it is not only basic. And then it also hits 130. So you're kind of chipping away with that. You can also use Max Blaze with a Rapid Strike Energy. So this is just a very good setup card. Uh, you're lining up your Pokemon on your bench to be able to also hit it. I mean, anything with energy acceleration is just going to help your game so much. Uh, but the fact that it's a beefy boy, it does chip away some damage and it just supports your deck so much is awesome. But I've been leaning away from the rainbow cards the past couple of months as far as like blinging out my uh, PTCGO decks online. I've just been leaning away from them. I find that with the beautiful alt arts that we're getting and just gorgeous full art cards, not all of them, I don't like all the full arts, but most of the full arts I really, really like more than the rainbow versions of them. So I don't know what it is. Let me know what you guys think as well. If you like the full arts and the, the colorful versions of the cards versus just like a rainbow filter over them. Reverse hole our Vesta and a Saws Buck. A boo! A boo! This is like very rare that I pull a rainbow or even a V out of an ETB. Sometimes I don't even get that. Most of the time it's just uh it's just hollows. So <laughs> don't let it fool you, okay? Don't think that all oh, ETBs are super busted because most of the time they're not. They are very, very not busted whatsoever. Reverse hollow Raboot and Scolipede as well. Raboot. I actually heard them talking in the anime and they just called them Raboot. Like, like it was like rabbit, but just with boot and sand. It was like Raboot. Raboot, the rabbit Pokemon. I don't know. It sounded really weird, and I was like, oh, that sounds like a strange way to say it, versus how I always say it. Raboot. Raboot. <laughs> Kung Fu. Inke. I love this Inke so much, and there's actually a really good um, Baby Malamar deck, so you can actually play this card in a deck, uh, which is really nice. Diglett. Score Bunny. Oh, I haven't even seen this art. What? That is so cute. I like it. Uh, Hatena Reverse Hollow, and... <laughs> Slurpuff, slurping it up. It just started pouring outside, so if you all hear the rain in the background, uh, that's why. We're supposed to get pretty bad thunderstorms here today, so we'll see what happens. One of my favorite cards, oh my gosh. I love this Pokemon so much. Ah, I can't stand it, it's too cute. Clavopus is one of my uh, my favorites now. Ooh, Reverse Hollow Brawly, that's cool. Reverse Hollow Trainer and Cobalion as well. Simplistic, sleek, modern. <laughs> Why did that sound like some sort of cologne commercial? Simplistic, sleek, Cobalion. I don't 
know why it just sounded like that. Cavalli is just so plain to me. Like, I like him as a Pokemon, but he's just so plain for some reason. Dyna Tree Hill, Spiral Energy. Oh, I love how it looks. Deerling, Galarian, Slow Poke doing Yoga, Coughing, Yamask, Snow Runt, Reverse Hollow Dug Trio. It is storming outside so heavily right now. And. <gasps> Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Celebi V. I've seen this card before and every time I see it again, it's just like, ooh. Unfortunately, as you can see in the close-up, this whitening is just absolutely terrible though. The whole entire edge, like all around the card is just torn up. A very, very white. It looks like, this is seriously like a played card. It looks like it's been played for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really sad to see uh, on a, a, a pack fresh, pack fresh. Two more packs, here we go. The fact that we have pulled a V and a VMAX Secret Rare out of eight packs so far is very, very good. Um, I feel kind of terrible now being like, oh, ETBs are bad because like 99% of the time they are. So again, don't let it fool you. Rapid Strike Scroll of Skies, that is very nice. Uh, of course, Versal Trainer and... What? <laughs> this never happens to me. This is literally better pulls. Higher rarity than I get from booster boxes. I don't understand. I don't understand this. This is the full art Sandaconda V. I actually dig this pattern behind him. It's very cool. It looks like a graham cracker or something. I like the color a lot. I like that it's not just like a like a poop brown, I guess. <laughs> it's like a it's like a golden graham. <laughs> Santa Conda V is really cool to have because it pairs um, quite well with, of course, its evolution, Santa Conda V Max, which is actually a card I really like from Chilling Rain. Um, I have not pulled it yet, but it's good that I have the Santa Conda V now because it's going to pair with that. Santa Conda V Max uh, is very, very good in my eyes. I think it is um, a really cool spread damage deck. It only um, takes one energy to actually use one of its attacks, so it pairs very well with Cheryl because you can heal all the damage from it. It's very tanky. It's like 320 HP, I think, on it. Santa Conda is also fighting type, so Eternatus and other dark Pokemon are going to be weak to it. All around, Santa Conda V Max is something I'm very excited to test out and play once I get the cards online and in person. So, there we go. I'm happy to have a sort of lead up to that. You know what I'm gonna start doing? I always talk about these cards, right, and how I'm excited to play them in decks and all that, but I should start actually linking you all to deck lists for these cards. I think that would actually be a really good idea so that if you're interested in the cards I talk about in this video, then you can just go to my description box, find a deck list, copy pasta it over into your PTCGO and start playing with the deck or uh, obtaining cards for the deck um, and then play with it once you actually get all those cards. If you need code cards, by the way, holla, po Town, place to go. Reverse holo, echoing horn, and go lurk for our last card. But that is A-OK -okay because this has just been an absolutely insane box for us. <laughs> All right, now that we've opened an ETB that is uh, better pulls than most booster boxes I open, let's go into our next one. Uh, <laughs> this is obviously going to be the Ice Rider version of the Shadow Rider Calyrex, but Ice. Can't decide which I like better, but I think it's gonna be the Icy, the Icy one here. I love that pastel blue. Of course, we have what we've all been waiting for, the- What? Why are these purple? What? Pokemon! Are you serious? What? They're the same. Ah, oh, that makes no sense. That doesn't even make sense. I don't understand this. Why would it not be blue? Because everything else is different. The sleeves are blue. The card divider is blue. That's like really blue too. But the dice are purple? The coin is blue. But the dice are purple? <laughs> I'm so salty. <laughs> I'm super bummed about that. I mean, you can tell I really wanted these ETBs for the dice because I'm so bummed that they're not even different colored dice. <laughs> oh, so sad. Snover, Blitzel. I really like this Blitzel because he's an electric Pokemon standing on the tip of an iceberg over an ocean where, I don't know, does he die? If he falls in, does he die? Nobody knows, okay? Ghastly, 
coughing. I really like that artwork so much. Dally bird, so cute. Reverse hollow peony and oh my. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I had to trade so many packs for this baby online. Holy smokes. Moltres V, this is not the first time we have pulled this card. This card is very, very good. It goes extremely well into dark decks, uh, fits seamlessly into Eternatus. It's very good. So if you pull Moltres V, you are a lucky duck. Uh, <laughs> ETBs! What's going on with these ETBs? Holy guacamole! That is, that is a good card. I guess Chilling Rain decided to be like, well, Boo, your luck has been pretty bad in Pokemon lately, so let's turn that around. Let's switch things up, which I am not complaining about. I'm very happy, uh, because we were going for a while there, not pulling very, very spicy cards. Everyone was like, well, Boo, your luck's terrible, and I was like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> Galarian Surfet. But hey, this goes to show when you open tons and tons and tons and tons of product, maybe one day you will get a secret rare card. <laughs> Lady Buzz, like, why do you do this to yourself, boo? Why, Porygon, Swirlex, uh, Sneasel, Reverse Hollow, Big Boy Ladybug. Oh my gosh, he even looks cute in the little, in the little basic version. That is so cute. <laughs> and Slurpuff as well. I'm sweating profusely. Thank goodness I'm wearing a black shirt right now. Uh, <laughs> why do I continuously wear grandma pants when I just roast in them? Kubfu, Inke, Diglett, Scorbunny, Reverse Holo Vocorona. This is the Reverse Holo Rare, so that is very nice. And I can't, I can't post this video. <laughs> I can't. I'm done. I'm done. This is more secret rares than, than I've pulled in months. What? Out of two ETB? <laughs> what? And they're like, and there's, and this is the best card. Let's just go into how sick this card is because it, this is unbelievable right now. I actually can't believe this. Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX. Um, okay, we haven't, I don't even think we've pulled a V yet of Shadow Rider Calyrex. So Underworld Door is the ability. Once during your turn, you may attach a psychic energy card from your hand to one of your benched psychic Pokemon. If you do, uh, you draw two cards. So this is an absolutely disgustingly good ability one of the reasons why this is so heavily played, why it's so good. 320 HP as well, our, our big VMAXs coming back. Big VMAXs with the big heads, baby. Uh, and then we have Max Geist 10 plus. This attack does 30 more damage for each psychic energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So it does require three uh, colorless energy to use this move, which is why Cresselia goes so well into this deck because it helps you accelerate those energies pretty much instantly to just instantly start attacking with Calyrex VMAX. It is so, so, so good. This card can be a bench sitter that accelerates energy for you to other attackers, or it can just go swing on its own for tons of damage because you've just been accelerating all of this psychic energy onto your board state. So it is very, very good. I will definitely have to leave uh, a deck list for you all in the description box as well. I am playing this deck and it has been going very, very well so far. So it's, it's a good, it, it's not good, it's great. This is bananas. Taco is not gonna believe me <laughs> when I tell him what I pulled. He's gonna be like, what? Fist bump energy. Uh, he's gonna be so happy because usually um, I'll record my videos and then I'll go downstairs after I'm done recording and he'll be like, so what'd you pull, what'd you pull? And I'll just be like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing good. And he's like always just equally disappointed every time. Reverse Hello, Crab Brawler, and Volcarona as well. So it is going to be a happy change this time. I get to actually go downstairs and be like, Taco, our luck is back, baby. Our luck is back. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself because I swear every time I, I say that or do that, then we open another product and it's like, oh, all green, all green packs. Ah. <laughs> Drizzle, Dinah Tree Hill, Justify Gloves, 
Deerling, Galarian, Slowpoke. I'm really enjoying Chilling Rain so far, though. This is probably actually one of my favorite sets. I know I probably say that about every set, but it really is. It really is. Reverse Hall Hatrim and Scolipede as well. I just think it made Pokemon, the, uh, the player format, so much healthier. Uh, I think Battle Styles is kind of like a precursor with the Rapid Strike, Single Strike cards. And then this really kind of took it home with balancing a lot of these decks, really making things more interesting, more creative for deck building. And I'm really enjoying it so far. And I think actually a mass majority of players are as well. They they like the, the format so far, the decks that have been doing well. Um, I'm really excited, of course, for a change, a rotation. So we get new sets uh, in standard rotation or sets that are cut off. It's going to be really cool to see what happens after that. Reverse Hollow Delibird and Agron, big stompy boy. Agron's dating profile has nice long walks through caves, confirmed. It's just cool to think about like giant Pokemon and how, how cute they are. One Pokemon though that I really don't understand is Duraludon. I don't get Duraludon. I don't get why he's dragon makes no sense to me. If someone can just explain Duraludon, that'd be great. Okay, this is our last pack here, and we got some honey, baby. Uh, Path to the Peak, Impact Energy, Grookey, Mareep. Let's see if we can pull something else spicy, but honestly, we've just gotten a really, really good box already. So let's see. Oh my goodness. Rapid Strike, Urshifu, Holographic. I was incorrect. We did get something very, very good. This hollow is so pretty. At least with all of the shenanigans leading up to the release of these boxes. Hopefully people who opened the boxes got some amazing pulls like this and some great things to add to their collection. They no longer have to go buy the rainbow versions of these cards, which I'm sure are very, very ridiculously expensive. So hopefully you all got some really great pulls from your chilling rain ETBs from the Pokemon Center. So I'm happy, I'm very happy with this. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to this video. Uh, let me know below if you like my little boo rants, if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on things going around related to Pokemon, whether that be TCG stuff or, you know, product stuff or whatever. Uh, normally I just kind of stay away from that just because, I don't know, I just like coming on here and opening packs sometimes and getting away from that for my own sanity, but also sometimes I like to start a discussion, hear your views on things as well. And sometimes I just feel like it, these things are not heavily talked about, especially here on YouTube. It is so hot in here, it's like 90 degrees, so I am dying right now, I'm melting, pretty much. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming to this video, thank you as well to all of my patrons. I appreciate you so, so much. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and has some amazing pulls on your uh, any of your Chilling Rain product, I guess. But uh, yeah, have fun. Play on, play us, play on, my Pokemon TCG players. I will catch you later. Bye bye. Mwah.